I'm very sad to see that Arecibo, the world's largest radio telescope, is being dismantled. It never was a radio telescope. The truth is, it was the world's largest secret military radar dish. Today, the hidden truth of the Arecibo military radar station. The Arecibo dish is an icon of science research. We've seen it on James Bond's Golden Eye. We've seen it with Jodie Foster in contact, looking for extraterrestrial life. None of that is true. Arecibo was built, funded, and functions as a US military Cold War radar station. It's absolutely rubbish as a deep space radio telescope. To understand that, let's look first at what radio telescopes that really look into space do and how they work. Now, this is a radio telescope. It's a deep space instrument. And to understand it, you have to understand how we perceive the world. When you look up into the night sky and you see a pinprick of light, a star, you're seeing what we can observe with our eyes, a tiny band of visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum. But all objects emit wavelengths that we can't see. Microwaves, infrared, x-rays, radio signals. It's all part of the structure of the universe, and that's what radio astronomy can observe. And to see these distant objects, to see the radio emissions from very early galaxies, from pulsars, they need to focus the energy from space into a parabolic dish, a dish that's shaped to make a point, a single point with a receiver to pick up the tiny little signals from deep space. And Arecibo never did that. Arecibo is not even a parabolic dish because what it did, what it was funded for, and why it was built was never to look into space. It was to look for nuclear warheads entering our own Earth's atmosphere. A stated requirement calls for a rocket-powered guided missile in both ballistic and glide modes with a 5,000-mile range, speed over the target of Mach 6, accuracy within 1,500 feet, and atomic warhead capability. Built remotely, in the mountains of Puerto Rico, very much associated with the United States, its geographical position is vital for tests that the US were doing with ICBMs in the Cold War 1950s. Let me explain. When intercontinental ballistic missiles were first nastily invented, the obvious way to trick your enemy is to have multiple warheads in the nose cone. So when the rocket goes up, lots of these bomblets, some nuclear and some decoys, were deployed. There was an idea that you could intercept 
these nuclear bombs after they were deployed in space by the ICBM and before they hit the Earth. But if there's lots of them and some were just decoys, you were going to waste a lot of time and energy destroying incoming bombs that were never going to explode. How did you know which ones were nuclear weapons? And that was why Arecibo was built. Here's pictures of the construction in the late 1950s, totally funded by the US military for upper atmospheric Earth research. Smart military scientists reckoned that you could tell the signature of an incoming real nuclear bomb to a decoy by the way it ionized air in the ionosphere, our upper atmosphere of our Earth. And to do that, you needed a really accurate, really big radar dish. Arecibo was the world's largest military radar. It bounced signals from the dish up into our atmosphere off an incoming object. The signal bounced back just like a radar looking at aircraft and you could tell the shape, the velocity and the spin of an object in our atmosphere. A military weapon device. So later, Arecibo's radar capability, and that's what it's built for, was used to look for asteroids. So you can bounce the radar off an asteroid and know if it's spinning. You can make a 3D model of it and know its speed, which was very useful. But that's all it did. It was looking for near Earth objects. It was a lie that it was a deep space telescope. It never was and doesn't work like that. Let me explain how it really worked. And now when you see these images of it, you will understand what it really did. So let's not degrade Arecibo. It's enormous and it's really accurate as a radar dish. It was built in a clearing between volcanic peaks in Puerto Rico. It's not built in a dish. It's actually built on a flat piece of ground. And the dish is actually a hung grid structure. And above it on three concrete towers are wires holding up the radar sender and receiving antennas. The control room is this building by a hillside nearby overlooking the dish. So first of all, of course, the dish isn't steerable, but the Earth rotates. So you can wait for the thing that you're looking for to come into your field of view. But that's also not quite true. Arecibo had a trick. Those three towers hold guy wires to suspend the radar sender and receiver, and you can move it. So when you're looking for an incoming ICBM warhead, you send out a radar pulse, you then receive it and switch off the signal of it being sent to get a very, very accurate picture spin velocity of the object that you're looking for re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. And it was brilliant at it. But of course, eventually the Cold War cooled down to the point where it didn't exist and we're less worried about multiple warheads today. Although I think the nuclear threat continues. So Arecibo was forced into use and remarketed as a scientific tool and now funded by the National Science Foundation universities in Puerto Rico. It was possible to do some science with it, but let me make an analogy. I woke up this morning thinking about Arecibo and I think the stupid but best way of looking at Arecibo, it's a bit like using a washing machine to make beer. <laughs> I mean, I know that's silly, but 
It was built as a washing machine. It was designed as a washing machine, but you can imagine modifying the pumps and putting different liquids in and using a washing machine to heat up and spin and make beer. I mean, it'd be a rubbish brewery out of a washing machine. But that's what Arecibo was in its later years. It's a military upper atmosphere radar station that you could make beer in like the washing machine. You cannot really use it for deep space research. This whole myth of SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligent life, using Arecibo to look for little green men was, good word, bollocks. Unless the little green men were in a spaceship in our upper atmosphere, which I doubt if they are. <laughs> But there was another secret use which I've discovered, which I'm going to tell you about today, and that's to look at satellites. So it was great and designed for tracking very small objects, incoming nuclear bombs in our atmosphere, but you can use it to check the speed, size and shape of satellites in Earth orbit, and it was no doubt used to look at other countries' military technology that was in space. It makes detailed 3D models of anything. It can bounce a radar wave off, and it's great for looking for asteroids, looking for their shape, speed, and spin. And I'm talking about asteroids between the Earth and the Moon. Anything further out from that, it's rubbish. Although it did do a project at looking at an injured US satellite, the SOHO satellite, that was spinning, and they wanted to know whether the spin speed was recoverable. And so when the SOHO Solar Observatory satellite was overhead Arecibo, they could map it using the radar to check its spin, and that revealed that the satellite was in fact in good order and they continued to use it. So what happened to it? Well, hurricanes hit it, unfortunately an earthquake also hit it, and the guy wires, which are extremely old, gave way. A engineering company from the US was maintaining it, and unfortunately first they lost one, and then the second of the guy wires, which collapsed and broke the flat, non-parabolic dish on the ground, which is made up of a mesh, and it's now structurally so unsafe that they're going to have to just dismantle it. And of course, its main function as an Earth-based radar station isn't really needed anymore. So they can make beer in the washing machine. I'm really sorry to burst that bubble, but I don't like mistruths. Arecibo was never the world's largest radio telescope. The truth is out there. Yeah.